last Halloween, <laughs> my daughter came home and declared, and she's four, by the way, well, really four going on 40. She said, Mom, I told Jenny I'm going to be Batman for Halloween. Well, one, I was completely shocked that she even knew who Batman was. And two, it's that determination that was gleaming from her eyes that completely blew me away. Well, I really stalled. I was at a loss for words. What did she say? She said, great, but you are a girl, so you should be a bad girl. Hmm, I stalled again. Because you see, I know my daughter, and I knew that wasn't the end of it. What do you think, honey? I told her, you are not in charge of the world. So if I want to be Batman, I'm going to be Batman. <laughs> that, <laughs> I'm still laughing about that. <laughs> and I'm still laughing about that today because she actually ended up going as Princess Ariel because Batman costume just didn't prove to have enough pink in it. But what she showed me is that she has incredible ownership of her reality and her world because truth is, we all have our reality. We're sharing reality right now. You guys sitting there and me here on stage and maybe you were thinking, I'm tired and enough sleep. Well, you know what, neither did I. But maybe you were thinking about that special boy or girl who was supposed to text you, and that's supposed to be like yesterday, and now you're thinking, what's taking so long? Nothing, really. They're home eating Doritos and playing Halo. But the, rea <laughs> the reality is our world is built around the small details, like zip codes and countries and you know, neighborhoods we were born into, and it's really everything we see around us, like the clothes we wear or the car we drive, and even, you know, little small things like personalities we fit into. But what happens, this is our reality, and as we grow up, the parameters grow even tighter because now we add job titles, and we add families into the mix and maybe even personality traits. So are you shy or tall or a nurse or maybe a little annoying sister like I grew up to be? All of this is our reality. But what you need to understand is that that reality is not all you own. And let me ask you a question real quick. And I want you to be honest, and I know it's kind of hard for me to see you, but I want you to raise your hands. When I came out here today, no time to be shy, how many of you thought of that I'm just this little skinny white thing with an accent? <laughs> That's okay, thanks for your honesty. Because I am, that's my reality. And I come from a very particular circumstance. I was born in a small town, Russia. And I moved here to the US when I was 19 with $400 in my pocket because my mom's whole salary was like $450. So I actually borrowed that from my uncle. And then on the plane, I met another Russian girl and we became friends out of circumstances because she also happened to have $400. So this is what we did. We rented an apartment, and this is all the furniture we owned, and the teddy bear is not even mine. And then we also bought the junkiest car possible. It was, yeah, it used to be white, but by the time we owned it, it was mostly the color of rust. And it was 89 for tourists, to be exact. And just so you know how uncool it made me feel, I was born in 1980, yeah. So that was my reality when I moved here in 2000. But I, I was happy. Because you see, I was a big believer then, and I'm even bigger believer now, that you don't have to see the world how it is. You get to see the world how you want to see it. So in my mind, I wanted to see big opportunities and make me into something bigger than what I am. And then I decided to make a choice and view myself as that entrepreneur I've always dreamed of being. So people used to come to my apartment and see my Goodwill mattress and my teddy bear for furniture and ask, why are you so happy? You know, we don't understand. And I didn't know how to explain to them then that in my world, I already saw tall buildings and fast cars and all these opportunities I could create. You know, we were young and hustling and had no money. And we used to, you know, make lots of mistakes and eat lots of eggs. 
I remember my mom came to visit and she asked if we wanted to have eggs for dinner and we already felt like two chickens. But what I kept doing is deciding and choosing and deciding again for the moment just like this. Because today I get to work with audiences just like you. I get to help teens to become successful. I get to watch teens to own real life businesses, start them and become teen entrepreneurs. I get to show parents what it's like to see their kids for whom they could be for the very first time. I get to help teens to become CEOs of their dreams. And you, you can create that world. It's always under construction because reality, reality may deem you as shy, but you will choose go out there and affect people and create random acts of kindness for strangers on the street just to brighten their day. And reality may deem you as a read college dropout, but you may view yourself as reaching out to thousands of people and impacting their life through technological wonders of iPhone and iPad. And you, you know, reality may view you as non-native, where English is not even your first language, but you may view yourself as a speaker on stage in front of hundreds of teens. That world, you can create it through the power of persistence, belief, and choice. Cornell University did a study that an average adult makes about 70 plus decisions a day. So everything starts with the power of choice. And it's not easy to do that, but you can choose alternate reality by choosing bigger, better, and bolder you. When I think of people who create unimaginable things like Steve Jobs or Elon Musk, they literally get to create the reality they want to see, and they do it by choosing to do so. And I know your reality can be happy or sad or ugly, and it's comfortable. But truth is, you can always create that new consciousness and choose the world you want to see. But then, then you might wonder, well, if we all have that choice, shouldn't more people do that? I mean, shouldn't more people go and build that world they want to see? Well, here's the catch. It requires you to have courage, and it requires you to be vulnerable. I mean, have you ever talked to someone who's like obsessed, like ridiculously, insanely passionate about something they're dreaming about? You know, I was just recently in Philippines, and I was watching these teen entrepreneurs pitch us on a project of building a solar-powered golf cart to drive on their campus. And I'm gonna be honest with you, my tech skills end on Twitter. But I really, I really didn't care how they were gonna put these formulas and pieces and projects together because it's the sparks in their eyes and that excitement, that ridiculous optimism in their voice that showed me that in their world, they've already built it they have already built it in the world they wanted to see. But you see, the truth is, when we talk about people like this, and we talk to them in real life, we, in reality, always A, label them crazy, or B, secretly go, I don't even care what he or she is selling, I've gotta have that, I've gotta have that iPhone. So what we do, we don't realize that it's not easy to see past your circumstances. It is not easy to see incredible inside of the ordinary. And it's certainly not easy to be called crazy or politically correct version unrealistic. <laughs> but you can still build the new reality even when the people around you and even people who love you may call it impossible. Truth is, your reality world and the world you want to see are always interconnected. And when I was younger, people used to ask me all the time, weren't you afraid to move here at 19 on your own with no family, no money? <laughs> and I used to laugh and say, you know, it makes it a lot easier when your life is too bad to be true. And they thought, huh, they couldn't understand that my reality in Russia gave me that push to make that choice. Because in my world, I wanted to have a house and I wanted to travel, and I wanted to help, to help teens, and I wanted to write poetry in the language that's not even my own, so I chose that. And I didn't care that I couldn't see any of that. I still chose that. 
And I didn't have any means when I got started, but I still could choose that. So you have that choice. The power is in your hands. And you will lose things, time and friends and even money, but you still have that power to have the world of reality or to go and make something out of your dream. And when you choose this, the reality is always going to be around. It's always going to be strong and enticing and it absolutely take risk to go there. But if you do, you can create the new consciousness. And I want you just try this for a second and imagine what if all of us met at that conscious level where we saw the world we wanted to see. I mean, what kind of world could we create? <laughs> we could create the world that's outside of our circumstances and our struggles and outside of our failures. We could create breakthroughs and recreate completely new reality. You have two worlds. You have the world of your reality and you have the world that you want to see. And the world of your reality pushes you and embraces you. But if you choose this other world, you, create, you can create things that are completely unimaginable. Truth is, you have two worlds, and they both belong to you. And there'll be times when you're so sick and tired of your circumstances, and you're so tied down by your reality, and you, will f you might fail. Well, no, you will fail, but so what? Choose again. <laughs>